Probably the most high profile case of polonium-210 poisoning involved a cup of tea. The death of Alexander Litvinenko after a drink during a meeting with two men at this hotel in London back in 2006 is now the subject of a gripping public inquiry. Litvinenko was a former Russian spy living in the UK and had been increasingly vocal against Vladimir Putin's government, accusing it of systematically orchestrating mafia-style crime, something which the lawyer representing his family echoed on day one of the hearing. Ben Emerson QC also claimed it wasn't the state that killed him, but the people close to Putin who called the shots. In a twist though, it's emerged that Litvinenko had been poisoned two weeks before drinking the tea. A botched first assassination attempt or part of the plan. More twists and turns are expected during the inquiry. It wasn't until nine years after the death of Yasser Arafat that a firm conclusion of potential poisoning had been reached, but even that was debated. According to officials in 2004, the former Palestinian leader initially had the flu, but was showing signs of gastroenteritis, diarrhea, and was vomiting. He was later diagnosed with a serious blood disorder, slipped into a coma, and died days later. There wasn't a post-mortem. His body was exhumed in 2012, and in November 2013, Swiss foreign experts said heightened levels of P210 in his tomb were consistent with poisoning but not absolute proof. They also said they found higher levels of polonium in blood, sweat and urine on Arafat's clothes. The next month, French experts went further and said analysis proved it wasn't down to poisoning and the levels were because of naturally occurring radon gas in the tomb, which is also present in soil and the atmosphere. The murder case of Sananda Pushkar has been gripping India and polonium-210 has been linked to it. The wife of former Indian minister Shashi Tharoor was found dead in a luxury hotel room they were staying in this month. An initial autopsy says it was a drugs overdose, but the head of the medical board investigating the death says polonium poisoning could have been possible. Tharoor has already accused police of trying to coerce his household staff into confessing to the murder with him, which he denies. Police have said the murder investigation is against unknown persons, so the intrigue remains. But what is polonium-210 and why is it being used as a poison? As mentioned earlier in the Yasser Arafat case, polonium-210 is a naturally occurring isotope created when uranium-238 decays slowly over time in the Earth's crust. Its radiation is alpha, which means it can't even penetrate human skin. However, it is a powerful carcinogen if ingested. It's one of 5,000 known compounds in cigarette smoke and has been directly linked to the development of lung cancer. It is really quite difficult to get hold of, certainly in any meaningful quantities. The industrial manufacture of polonium-210 worldwide only results in around 100 grams a year. But if you could, what would happen if you ingested it? If a concentrated amount resides in the body, particularly entering the bloodstream via the spleen or kidneys, it can have devastating effects. Just one microgram in this instance could kill five people. As a poison then, it is very effective. Get a concentrated amount into someone's body and it'll damage the organ tissues and they'll probably die quite quickly. Now what becomes interesting is how to detect that that has happened to someone. Polonium-210 has a half-life of just 140 days. This means its radiation, and therefore its traceability, diminishes rapidly. There are only a few incredibly sensitive and specialist techniques that could find if someone has been poisoned by it, and even then, only if you were looking in the right places. So, as poisons go, a borderline untraceable one that only gets more untraceable in the five months after it's been ingested, it's a good one.